this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim on October the 28th, 2018. This is the Sunday edition. Hello, I'm going to turn this right over to Vegas. Hi, good evening. Thank you for joining us on the edition of our Wall Street update. Uh, before we get started, uh, I hope everyone had a great weekend. I just came back. And uh, I just want to just uh, send out heartfelt um, condolences, thoughts, and prayers for the victims and uh, people in Pittsburgh uh, regarding this tragedy. So please, our thoughts are with you um, during this difficult time. So on to uh, the markets. Um, so I just want to tell you which stocks I'm going to talk about today with Jim. Uh, we're going to talk about NDRA, FLKS. PXS, Seed, Yeko, Pura, PBR, Ears, and then I have a surprise little special at the end. So let's start with uh, NDRA. And uh, I have an active swing trade on this stock. This is for Njira Inc. Very nice uh, company. They are into ultrasound. Uh, anyhow, this had a nice 52-week uh, closing and looking for a continuation on the stock. I really did like the volume and especially towards the close. I thought that we closed really strong here. Um, so I do have a swing trade here on the stock. I am looking for the first target of $6. However, it can probably go higher but I first have to wait for it to get there first and then can reassess the chart. Uh, but I'm going to turn that over to Jim, but I'm really liking where this stock's going. And I think we'll probably see more than $6 um, as a swing. But uh, for now, that's just my initial first target. So Jim, what do you think on that one? Well, it's definitely bullish. And you can tell that by the last, like you said, week chart. So we need to really break out and try to hit this 548. 548, 549, somewhere in that vicinity. If we can bust past that, we can go to the year high of 588. And you see I have a target up here, 586. So let me pull this down to a, let's say, a 20-day chart real fast and see what we got. Yeah, we got a double top right here at 518. Looks like we kind of hit that Friday. You can see the little base here, maybe 522 up in that vicinity. So let's bust past that, go to the 548 and try to get it to 586 and this is n d r a great okay so next one is called f l k s that's flex pharma we've talked about this stock before i uh, just wanted to I don't have a position on it just want to bring it to your attention there was a 13d filing um, by Westfall Christoph and uh, he took a position for 3.941 million shares. Jim has the uh, insider info right there. Uh, so just keep it on watch whenever there's a catalyst like this, there's interest in the stock. So keep it on watch for a potential move and uh, kind of at a little bit of a bottom here. So Jim, you tell us what you think on that chart. That's what I'm seeing too. Looks like we had a 39 cent low on this thing, FLKS, and here we are sitting at, at 46 cents. You can see we have a huge gap that needs to be filled here. And a few weeks back, we had a high of this thing. It ran all the way up to 146. See how that kind of ran up? We had like a two day high and then it pulled back real hard. And here we are back here at a low and see consolidated so let's see what we got here on the 20 day look at that big run there so we pulled back we run up to the 50 day there i had a low support on this thing at 40 looked like 45 cents looks to me like we could get right in there with it bring it up to about 56 and that looks like it was that high after hours so yeah this thing might be bullish flks so let's keep it on watch I see another support right here at 50, and that's about where it closed at after hours. So, yeah, I'm kind of liking this chart a lot, Vegas. Yeah, I'm liking it too because it had a nice run from the 146, and now it's down like a dollar off. So this yep. is a sale price stock. So not telling you guys to jump in. Just keep it on watch, and we'll see what does tomorrow. You might want to take a starter swing because 
Uh, I liked, I love this 13D uh, activist filing for 3.94 million. So on watch. Um, next one is PXS. And this one here is part of the shipper family. And you guys know shipper stocks are going to be hot. And we, I do expect um, this one to get a little hotter. But they had very good earnings, had a nice, nice, nice run uh, the other day. And even though it had a nice run, it pulled back. But I still think the stock is definitely one to keep on your watch. If you are not in an active swing, uh, do not have a position at all. But the stocks does interest me because I liked the action that I saw the other day. So I'm going to keep this one on my watch for tomorrow and kind of looking at this one for a continuation. Uh, closed at uh, 167. So I'm kind of looking to see uh, when as high as 190. I, I'm surprised it didn't actually go to two dollars. So I'm kind of seeing on this, uh, you know, from a reversal perspective from the high of day Friday to where it pulled back. Uh, would like to see this uh, reverse higher and probably look to break the high if it can with some serious volume. But I'm still liking the chart. Very beautiful chart. Yeah, I noticed here on October 5th, it got a, uh, announces a receipt of NASDAQ bid of price deficiency notice to keep it above a dollar, you know. So here we are. We are above a dollar. So I, I don't see an issue with that at all coming around the corner. So this is PXS. I'm going to pull up a year's chart. Let's look at it first. It looks like this on a beautiful two, one and a half, two week run. We settled back down after a, a daily high of, let me look at that. See, we got, I mean, we had a year high of 1222 up here. Then it's pulled back and we had some, looks like a pretty good little resistance here at 134 and we broke past that. We have another one right around, let's say 150, busted past that, and we got another one right up in here around 168, and that's where we closed at. So I think we can bring this up here that where that 50 day was right here, and that'd be right around two bucks, 206. So let's keep PXS on watch. Let me pull up the 20 day just to have a solemn look here. See how beautiful this run breakout's been for the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, pulled back, so I think it can maybe pull back and consolidate right around 158, 160. Let's see what happens with this. this is PXS keep it on watch? Okay, We're so I'm gonna make a it. note of that one. Yeah, I'm bullish on that one, so I'll keep an eye on it for sure. Uh, next one is oh god, I never thought I'd say this, but I have to still talk about this one. Is uh, seed. Uh, the chart is extremely bullish. Uh, I'm gonna let I'm gonna just send this right over to Jim to talk about because he was eyeing it too. Coincidentally, when him and I were talking tonight, he's like, "I've been watching this one too, Vegas." I'm like, "Okay." So, Jim, I'm gonna let you talk about that seed uh, chart. Yep, seed is now a low float stock, so it's got all the low float people involved in it, and this is one stock that I used to just play once a year. And it seemed like I always picked the right day on it for some reason, just probably because I'm from Missouri and I know how to how to judge to pick the weather or something. I don't know, but seed is now bullish. I've noticed on the tape that it's been getting a lot of uh, a lot of interest, and so we we kind of pulled back a little bit on Friday. We have like a little high we have to get to, which would be around 8:36. You see that right there on the base of them candles. So expect it to pull back a little bit. Find support maybe right around 742. Somewhere in that vicinity, 7, 730 something. You see where this high, previous high was back here. How it consolidated right in here. So let's see what happens when it pulls back to about 731. And that seed. And let me pull up just one more chart. That'll be a five day, five minute. See how we kind of got a little bowl right here, a little cup and handle maybe happening. So it could go either way. But this week I'm going to be using different time frames on my SMAs. So that's going to be my little case study. Just want to get that out there. And this is Seed, Vegas. Okay, so I just want to again talk about uh, Yep. So Yep had the nice run. 
And I just want to explain Yako because everyone's like, what's so great about this company, their gem, how gemstone. So I had people messaging me about this. So I just want to just explain quickly. Uh, so, you know, they bought this sapphire and how they're going to look to monetize the money on this is they're actually going to have this on tour. So this gem is going to be going around to different museums and, uh, What's going to happen is obviously they're looking to fall from $56 million to $95 million revenue just from showcasing this uh, gem. So I think Yako, even though Jim scalped it only eight or ten times, on Friday on a red day, Jim was green. And I love his attitude. i got to tell you, that's a fabulous attitude. Um, I still think Yako is bullish. And... Uh, had a beautiful run Friday, but still looks like a, a very bullish chart. And Jim, you can talk about that because, I mean, you were playing it all day. Oh, I love this chart. I mean, we had a ball on this thing um, Friday, as you can tell. I mean, it ran even up the whole the channel of the bottom support here, which we were calling in and out, in and out, in and out. And when this thing started breaking out, um, I just, I mean, just started running. I got in this thing and I was out of it within probably four or five seconds. Flipped it for a fast seventy dollars. So it, it, it was a, this was an exciting stock. This really brought up my challenge account that I have that I started at a thousand. It brought it to you know, up, helped bring it up to thirty five hundred Friday. So I'm kind of at a new plateau with that. This is YECO. I got it prepared. I think it's if it pulls back, we're at it. We closed right at a support, right around 620 right here, 615. But I've got this flag down for a pullback maybe because I still think that short people are going to treat this like it's just a rock. So you're going to have your negative traders back here trying to short this thing. And we have a long target on this, and we're, we think it's still going to be bullish. And I'm going to play it like it's a bullish stock. If it pulls back any, it's going to pull back to maybe this pivot point area right about above $5, $5.20. But, you know, it'll be a sharp pullback, and it'll be bouncing back up just like it did right here. See how that bounced real strongly up? So let's keep YECO on watch. I just loved how it played Friday. It was just so much fun. I even called the pullback right here if it broke this channel, and it did. So I stayed out of it, and I think I might have flipped this probably 15 times Friday. That's how much fun I had with this Vegas. Yeah, I know, and I think only a while took a tiny loss, but then you recouped. So, yep. I mean, Jim just focused on one play the whole day, and you know what? I don't really care if people think that that's boring. Uh, you know, he's making money, so you know what? Um, people don't like it. <laughs> that's too bad, but Jim's making money focused on one stock and i love it and you know what we love stocks um the next one is cura which is the otc stock you know that one we've it's a marijuana stock we've talked about this i'm still talking about it because it's still a good setup and i think the charts bullish the stock had you know previously hit that 25 pulled back um you know went down to I think back down towards 10 cents or sh just shy of 10 cents and then now it's around 11 and change and it's now still room for this to still go up a little higher, at least three, four pennies. Um, but it's a good return if you can position size accordingly. <clears throat> so Jim, you talk about that Pura chart because it looks like pure profits again are coming our way. Yep. I think the pot sector is going to start kicking back again. Get start because we had a pretty good pullback and our, our three favorites and, and Pura was one of them, but it, it was kind of expected because we hit the target and once we hit the target just 25 cents we expected it to pull back but we've noticed in the last four days that we've had higher lows at the end of the day and that's a good sign and it always hits a higher high and then friday it just kind of puttered out a little bit and followed this 50 sma so i'm keeping this stock definitely on my long-term core watch list and that's pura and along with that, we've got ACB, and I'm going to post this chart in here real fast just to show you where, where we are with it. You see how we've kind of had a ascending uh, wedge coming down here. A little descending in a way, but I think we're just tightening up. 
for a squeeze and it's going to bounce up. This is ACB in the same way with Cron. It's acting about the same kind of way, the same kind of sell off. We have that little wedge, the exact. So you could follow both of these stocks and they run about the same kind of pattern. That's ACB and Cron. And the next one is one that Vegas wants to bring up. Yeah, so I just want to bring up uh, PBR. So PBR, um, the stock here, um, obviously you guys know that the elections uh, were happening in Brazil. So this stock here, Petróleo Brasileiro. And just to tell you guys, coincidentally, the candidate winner for the presidential election in Brazil is Jair Bolsonaro. And he's the winner of uh, the election. He was actually competing against the candidate Fernando Haddad. And uh, he was a leftist um, ex Sao Paulo mayor. And I got to tell you, there was a lot of chaos happening in this uh, country. Um, I don't know if you guys follow some of the news, but there was a lot of politically motivated violence and the actual uh, presidential candidate who won, Mr. Bolsonaro, he actually got stabbed in the stomach last month. So luckily he survived and uh, he's actually the winner. So based on that, I think all Brazilian stocks should be on watch, but I'm going to say that PBR is one of mine because we looked at it from an options trade perspective on uh, Friday and uh, we took some options on that. So uh, we'll see how those work out. But uh, for those of you that trade options or are looking to trade stocks, you should probably have a list of Brazilian stocks to keep an eye on as a result of this uh, action. All right. Well, you notice okay. it's had a pretty good run already here in the last 20 days. It's ran from 1187 all the way up here to 1660 with some pretty nice little breakouts. With a little bit of consolidation, then it breaks out again. So kind of expect a little bitty pullback to this real hard support level right around 16. 16 would be your low, 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 low support. This is PBR. I'm going to pull up a year's chart and have you look at it real fast. See, we're nearing up to... the the 15 of the, the the year high of 1720 and we're out at 1624 I'm liking this little channel that it's in right now it seems like it's creating lower highs with higher highs so let's get keep PBR on watch and I'm not in it but I definitely will start watching it okay and let's talk about ears quickly yep you called that one right <laughs> ears was on our watch for Thursday if you guys watched the video and your ears should have been burning on Friday remembering that we talked about the stock because we said looking for this to somehow be a bit bullish here for a reversal and we had that happen on Friday yep any thoughts of what you think of the chart going into this week Jim or you think we're done with that or what do you think no I think what what happened Friday was about the way we called it um we got to it might pull back Friday, and it did. Right first thing out of the morning, pulled back right to 58. I had a 57, 56 support on ears for a final low support. I heard Vegas and I were definitely getting in the bullish um, department that it was going to start to turn around. And by gosh, if it didn't do that, so I have to give her kudos on that one right there. We had a little golden cross. Once that hit, we just broke out. So this was a nice little run from 59 cents all the way to 84, um, matter of the second half of the day, and it was spotted right out of that golden cross. And we pulled back a little bit for a correction here at 71. Definitely keep it ears on watch. We've seen this pattern before, when the, and we don't expect a big bounce, but I do expect maybe some good scalps. Definitely some good little scalp plays on this. Maybe keeping a core position for the next bounce, but it's definitely going to be a flipper stock, and that's going to be E A R S. It's breaking out. Not going to be very big, but it it'll definitely be fun. Okay. Okay. And last but not least, I have a little Vegas special. This one's called N I H D, and that one there is one to watch for a continuation 
on a bullish momentum on NIHD. So for those of you that like swing trades uh, or a slower pace trade, this might be one that you may want to add to your watch list or look at and consider it. Um, and Jim, you can talk about the chart, but I do like what I'm seeing on the weekly and uh, looking for some uh, continuation on the stock. And it actually looks to me that it wants to try to break out yep. if this can go over 644. But I'll turn it over to you to comment and then we'll wrap it up. This is one of them stocks where you, you, you say to yourself, I wish of, you know, I wish of. This thing was 22 cents last year on a, on a yearly chart. 22 cents a share and now we're up here at 632 such a beautiful chart we had a year high of this thing at 729 with maybe a base of a candle high of around 687 somewhere in that vicinity I'm bullish on this chart I'm gonna pull up the 20 day I mean this thing can pull back a little bit but also we're at we broke out past the old resistances which were right around 627 Friday, and then have we, I mean, this is a real nice bounce Friday. So keep NIHD on your bullish watch list. Um, any kind of pullback, you'll probably receive a good little, uh, little uh, bounce on this. So this could be a good scalper trade, and also this could be a good maybe hold and swing trade if you get in on a pullback. This is NIHD. I like it. I think it's bullish, and um, this is our special of the day. Okay. All right. Well, on that note, I think we're going to wrap up this video because uh, you guys have a lot of studying to do or should be taking notes um, to um, document uh, the supports and resistance that Jim talks about. Uh, that's the whole point of talking about them. There's no way you could be listening to this information and actually memorizing Jim's support and resistance. That's why you should be listening to the video but having a notepad and a pen. Um, even if you're not watching the video, if you're just like listening to it, the audio portion, please write down the ticker and the support and resistance because that is what's going to help you decide to go into the trade, uh, take a look at the chart on your own, do your own due diligence. But this is why we comment and give you the feedback because it helps you. Um, and we're glad to hear that it's helping so many people. So thank you so much for listening to Vegas and Jim. We appreciate it. Please follow. Please subscribe. And uh, we love stocks. Anything to add, Jim? No. Um, just uh, also everybody that's on my channel, James Howard channel, if you could follow the uh, I Love Stocks channel, which is going to be posted down below, below the video, if you could hit that link and then hit the subscribe button and maybe the bell and and every time we get a new video, you get updated on the new video that comes out or the new aftermarket report, let's say. And so, yeah, let's have a good week next week. When the market's red, I am green. I proved that last week. I did very well in my in my uh, challenge count. And also, most of the room did very well if they just followed the few stocks that were running. So this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. October the 28th on Sunday, 2018. I love stocks.